Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about type 3 binary compounds. In an earlier video we talked about type 1 and type 2 binary ionic compounds and today we're going to learn about type 3 binary compounds. So how are type 3 binary compounds different than type 1 and type 2 binary ionic compounds? Well it says right here that a type 3 binary compound is a compound that contains just two nonmetals. Okay, so if you remember when we talked about type 1 and type 2 binary ionic compounds, you had a metal bonded to a nonmetal. With type 3 binary compounds, it's simple. You have a nonmetal bonded to a nonmetal. For example, if we take a look right here, dinitrogen pentoxide, we have nitrogen bonded to oxygen, and both of these are nonmetals. If we take a look at carbon tetrahydride or CH4, once again, we have a nonmetal like carbon bonded to another nonmetal like hydrogen. So anytime you have a type 3 binary compound, you're going to have a compound that consists of only two different elements, and both of those different elements are both nonmetals. So now let's take a look at some of the rules for naming type 3 binary compounds. Okay, so when naming type 3 binary compounds, it's simple. Name the first nonmetal preceded by a prefix that indicates the number of that specific atom in the molecule, followed by the second nonmetal preceded by a prefix that indicates the number of that specific atom in the molecule, followed by an IDE suffix. So when we name type 3 binary compounds, we have to memorize a list of prefixes. Okay, and we'll take a look at those in a second, but let's take a look. N4O10, we see right here that this is a nonmetal, and this is a nonmetal right here. So we know that this is a type 3 binary compound, and when we name this, if we take a look, this subscript 4 here gets converted into a prefix. This subscript 10 here gets converted into a prefix over here. So tetranitrogen means 4 nitrogens, and dec oxide means 10 oxides. Okay for the compound or molecule N4O10. P2O3, for example, is diphosphorus trioxide. N2O4 is dinitrogen tetroxide. Uh, PB4Br8 is tetraphosphorus octabromide. S2Cl2 is going to be disulfur dichloride. And N2O5 is going to be dinitrogen pentoxide. So whenever we have a type 3 binary compound, a compound that consists of just two nonmetals, we have to use these little prefixes that we're going to take a look at here momentarily. All right, but what if we're working the other way? What if you are given the name and you're asked to write the chemical formula for a type 3 binary compound? All right, so what if you're given the name and you're asked to write the chemical formula? Well, take a look right here. It says when writing the chemical formulas for type 3 binary compounds, the more electronegative element gets listed first, followed by the least electronegative element. And the prefixes that precede the element name indicate the subscript that follows each element. For example, if we take a look right here, we have carbon monoxide. Mono means one, so one oxygen. And because we don't see a prefix on the first element, uh, that means that this carbon is also going to have a subscript of one. So we end up with CO as our chemical formula for carbon monoxide. If we take a look right here, disulfur. That means two sulfurs and dichloride. That means two chlorides right here. So we're only going to use these prefixes when we have two nonmetals bonded to one another. If we take a look, carbon disulfide is right here, two sulfides right here, and then we have one carbon right here, and phosphorus pentachloride, right? Penta is five and chloride is Cl. And if we take a look right here, we have one phosphorus right here. Okay, so. Uh, when we're writing the chemical formulas for type 3 binary compounds, uh, these little prefixes here will tell us what the subscripts are that follow each atom or element in that compound. So now let's take a look at a few rules before we start doing some problems on our own, of our own. All right, so here you go. I would pause this at this point in the video and just take a look at the prefixes that we're going to use to name type 3 binary compounds. Okay, for example, the prefix 1 is mono, the prefix uh, for two is di, the prefix for three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, and ten is deca. Okay, so the first rule says right here, if the subscript following the first element in a type three binary compound is one, you don't write the prefix mono. So if we take a look right here at this molecule, we have a nonmetal here, we have a nonmetal here, so it's a type three binary compound. But when we write the name for this, it says right here, 
there's an imaginary one after the first element here, and we do not need to use the prefix mono if the one is on the very first element in the type three binary compound. So normally we would put mono, carbon, dioxide, right? There's only one carbon here and two oxides for dioxide. However, if there is only a subscript of one on the very first element in your type three binary compound, you don't write it and it's just carbon dioxide. Let's take a look at this one right here. If we take a look, there's two nitrogens, so dinitrogen. And then we have five oxides. The prefix for five is penta. All right, dinitrogen penta oxide. However, the rule states right here that if you have a prefix that ends in A followed by oxide, we just drop the A. So dinitrogen penta oxide is the correct name for this one. If we take a look right here, we have CO. Well, we don't need to put mono if the first element only has a subscript of one, so it's just carbon. And then let's take a look. We have one oxygen here, or one oxide for mono oxide which brings us to the third and final rule anytime you have the prefix mono followed by oxide it's not carbon monoxide that comes out of the tailpipe of vehicles and it's not carbon monoxide it's just simply carbon monoxide so we can get rid of one of these o's here we drop one of those o's okay so let's apply some of these rules to a few example problems now right in this first example here it says to write the name of si2br so we have two nonmetals, so it's type 3 binary the prefix for two is di right the prefix for two is going to be di sulfur and then we have six brom bromides right six bromides for hexabromide so the name of this molecule here or compound is disulfur hexabromide let's take a look at another one all right let's take a look at this one we have two nonmetals again phosphorus and sulfide or sulfur come from this side of the periodic table so we have four phosphorus so the prefix for four is tetra right so tetraphosphorus and then we have five sulfides the prefix for five is penta so tetraphosphorus penta sulfide will be the correct name for this uh, this molecule right here let's take a look at another one all right, so in this one right here, we have one sulfur. We don't use the prefix mono if the first element in the compound has a subscript of one, so it's just sulfur. And then if we take a look, there's four chlorides. The prefix for four is tetra, so sulfur tetrachloride will be the correct chemical name for this compound right here. Let's take a look at another one. All right, in this one here, you're given the name, you're asked to write the chemical formula, so dinitrogen, that means N2 and trihydride. Trihydride. Tri is 3, and we're dealing with hydrogen here. So N2H3 will be the correct chemical formula for dinitrogen trihydride. Let's look at another one. Okay, what about iodine pentafluoride? So iodine, there is no prefix in front of this, so that means there's just one. So I and then pentafluoride. Penta, if you take a look here, is 5, and we're talking about fluoride, so IF. Five is the correct chemical formula for iodine pentafluoride. Let's take a look at one last example. We have chlorine dioxide. So chlorine is Cl, and there is no prefix that comes in front of here, so that means there's a subscript of one here. And dioxide, di, if you take a look, is two. Oxide is O. ClO2 would be chlorine dioxide. So there you go. Uh, there's some examples of naming and writing the chemical formulas of type three binary compounds. Let's take a look at a couple more that you can try on your own. Okay, so what I would do now is try these on your own. Go ahead and pause this video. Take five or ten minutes to get out a piece of paper and try these on your own. Go ahead and write the chemical formula for diphosphorus pentoxide. Go ahead and write the name for NF3, etc., etc. See how you did. And I'm about to show you the answers right now. So if you don't want to see the answers right now, go ahead and pause the little video and try these on your own. Here are the answers right here. How did you do? Hopefully you got them all right. If so, good going, good job. If you like what you see, go ahead and click the little uh, bomb in the bottom right-hand corner that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comment section or uh, comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.